for, and here you can see one sculpture that was made by uh, students inspired by John Ahern, with John Ahern, a great sculptor from the Bronx. Um, in any rate, we're gonna begin just doing a little stretch, okay? So just, it feels good because it just kind of relaxes you a little bit. So let's do some movement, some, everybody's doing like kind of dances for the for videos. <laughs> Um, so just, you know, I think movement and dance is such a good thing. Um, so just a little bit more. I would like you to take a deep breath and then breathe out. This helps me too because I'm a little bit nervous, so it's a good thing. Okay, so as Neil said, um, we are going to create artwork inspired by Sanford Biggers, an incredible artist an African-American artist inspiring himself from a lot of cultures, but especially his African-American roots. Um, however, he takes off into his own beautiful thing as an artist. So uh, first I'd like to show you uh, some images. The first image, so I'm gonna turn the camera by the way, you're not gonna see me and we're gonna start seeing my hands and my images and the material and the artwork, okay? So okay. Not right now I'm gonna move the camera, I forgot which way, but I think it's this way. Okay. Yep, that's the way. Looks good. Looks good? Yep. Maybe. Okay. Let me see if I can move it a little bit up. Okay, good. So here we are. This is our working table. But first, I'd like to show you some of the images. This is called Yo Yo. It's like a pyramid. It's all flat. It's um, like a, on a on a corner and it's hard to see the volume, but these are boxes. Um, so that's one work of art that we can see. Um, another work of art that we will see are, is this one. This is a sculpture. Here you can see a little bit better the sculptural parts of it. These are like a diamonds and look at the triangles look at the shapes, and then inside he makes these beautiful designs. Um, this is, I believe it's called Banneker. Um, Another artwork, which is amazing. Look at the colors, green, red. Um, we have these different colors designs inside. You see this pink triangle, and then these dots. Um, so this is amazing. He does one type of shape. These are wall pieces. So it's like sculptures on the wall. This is a beautiful one. My favorite color is pink, yes. <laughs> and look at these beautiful shapes. You know, this is like a diamond and then a little triangle coming out. So Sanford Biggers create these beautiful, very original sculptures. This must be very familiar to you. This is our wonderful flag. And uh, look at the different shapes it creates. Just from that, okay? Just getting some ideas. And now we're almost ready. Now. Our next step is to bring out our materials. You guys have like a box, like this box, and you can pull out the bag, the different materials, and just take them out, you know? So it's what um, Aurelio is referring to is um, we had uh, free art materials available at the museum for the past week. They came in these bags, um, and to get them, you just had to make a free reservation to visit. So if you did pick up materials, you can take out this paper bag. Uh, if you weren't able to come pick up materials or you didn't know that that was an option, um, you can use materials you might have around your house. Um, for example, I'm going to be using some um, leftover cardboard I have from some packages. Um, so you can definitely make do. But just to let you know, if you end up um, wanting to attend family affair events in the future for all of our upcoming virtual family affairs, we will have free materials available at the museum. And to get more information about how to get a ticket to come to the museum, you can go to bronxmuseum.org slash visit. Thank you, Nell. So what we're doing now is like taking out the materials and sorting them out, sorting all the different materials that I have that we provided. However, if you don't have uh, materials um, from the museum, we need just any kind of color papers, any kind of designs, color papers, and our main um, 
board or another paper, this is where our, our composition will go. Okay, so, so that's what we, we need. And the first thing I'd like you to do is, well, we, we need scissors so you can pull out scissors. Um, and again, all the colors papers that we, that we have. So we just pull them out and now we're ready to work, okay? Um, so just to prepare material, as I think is the most important part uh, before you begin. One of the things that I would like to do is to make some glue with water. I have my glue, you will have a glue uh, that you will need and put some glue on a cup to be able to work easier. We're gonna dilute the glue a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna get some water. Little bit of water, a drop of water and dilute your, your glue, okay? That way we can brush it into our artwork, okay? So I'm gonna put the glue here. Um, we also have glue stick and we also can make use of our, of our glue our glue bottle, because sometimes we can need to do it directly, okay? We have papers, oh my God, we have stickers. Um, we have all kinds of goodies once we begin doing the work. Okay, the most, one of the work, the parts that are a little bit, um, takes a little time will be making boxes. In your kids, there are these, there are these flat things that actually they are boxes. And um, what I'd like you to do one by one, you're gonna open them like this. There's one that has three sides and there's the other end that has four. I would like you to start with the four and we're gonna fold it, okay? And then you see these shapes. These go inside the slots. There are slots on this side that is, that way you can put the box in. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the other one. It take a little time. If you push it too much, you can, you know, push it from the inside and then get it right, okay? Then you finally get the other side and just like a box, there's a little flip here and you just fold it and you just put it right there, okay? So I would like you to make maybe with the help of your brother, sister, mom, um, make as many boxes as you can and, and do the same process. I'm sorry, I did the wrong. You need to do first the, four, the side that has four lips, okay? So if you notice, there is a slot. Those are the first ones that go folded and then the other ones go in, in there, okay? So just continue. You need to do about 10 boxes as many as you can, okay? So let's have our second box. And again, because I don't have these boxes that look a lot easier to assemble, you can do this with any kind of cardboard that you have. It's just going to require probably a little trial and error and some um, geometry. Um, well, you can do if you have cereal boxes, you can cut them in little squares. And that will do. Or any paper, just cut the papers or white plain paper in squares. That that can do the trick too. Yeah. Okay. And, and let me maybe maybe I can. It's good that you. Oh, I did this the wrong way because I started on the other side. Um, but it still can work. Um, you're making me think that maybe. So now we continue. I've made five so boxes. far. Excuse me. I've made five of them so far. Oh my God, you're fast. But and I'm moving pretty quickly. <laughs> okay, no, so yeah. <laughs> we continue making boxes. Try to make a few more. If some of you need help with mom, from mom and dad, that's a good thing, because then we can do it a little faster. Um, but you're making me think, um, let me get a piece of paper. If you don't have boxes, we can just cut squares. So first we will do, Cut stripes, okay, maybe four stripes, and cut um, 
about two inches a square of each. So about, so then we have, they don't have to be perfect, but cut me some squares and that will do the trick for the, for today's activity, okay? So cut all the stripes that you have, maybe you can pair them like this. And so some of you don't have those boxes, then this is a good thing to do, okay? Ha, Great. That's wonderful. So now we have uh, this material, these squares that will take the, the can be used instead of these boxes. So whatever I do with these boxes, you can do it with these squares too. And I also will, will grab, grab, I will also do it in another paper so we can both are uh, able to do it, okay? And in, in, Aurelia, is it okay if I only made five boxes or eight boxes, will it still work for this activity? Yeah, I think Great. the more the better, but eight boxes, I think minimum eight boxes is good. Okay, okay. so just Great. continue doing the boxes. Great. And um, I cannot cheat it because I made a lot of them before we started, but um, just take your time. And, and uh, the less you rush, the better things happen. But again, do the side that has four side, four, four lips, is that called lips? Four. Flaps. And then, how do you call this? Flaps, I think. Flaps, four flaps. Yeah. And um, good. Son muy fáciles de armar. They are very easy to make. Pero tienen, necesitan tener un poquito de paciencia. Sí, este, vamos a hacer, um, I'm saying the same thing, but in Spanish. Um, Vamos a hacerlo con paciencia. El lado que tiene así como una ranurita se va a doblar primero, ¿verdad? Um, y luego, it's not easy, pero una vez que agarran la idea, it's very easy. It takes a little bit of practice. Toma un All poquito right. de práctica. Y ya, pues sí. I got 10. You got 10? Yep. Good. OK. So, ahora vamos a comenzar. Ahora, um, we are going to start. Now, the thing is that um, this is tape. So if you need to go back, you can go to online and find the tape of this activity. Is that yeah. right, um, Patrick? Exactly. So we're going to move on now to the next uh, step. But if you still find yourself making boxes, you can always come back um, and watch this video on our website. Or um, there will also be a step-by-step list of written directions. All right, Aurelia, so what yeah, is in the, um, So in other words, yeah, we, we, there will be, va a haber una, va a haber un video de esta actividad en línea, ¿verdad? Este, okay. So now we're gonna, I have all my boxes here on my side. Okay, I have a whole bunch right here. I'm gonna move some. And uh, we're gonna start making arrangements. The first arrangement is going to be all vertical like this, horizontal rather. So we're gonna do, this is one possibility that you can make. I have 12 boxes, okay? If you only have nine, then you'll do three and three and three, okay? So I'm gonna do 12, okay? Maybe I'll do less depending on the shape, but this is one, one way of doing it. If you like the shape, we can begin gluing it. But let's do another shape. And this is very simple. Look, look at this trick. You just move the box a little bit like that and they become diamonds. Wow. Isn't that amazing? And uh, now you do like that, you like this and like this, and you have this own wonderful diamond shape design, okay? So you just move the box like this. Isn't that amazing? Okay. Another arrangement, um, let me see, um, you can do an X. So we can do, just stay with that and just remove some, and then we can make an X. We can make the X just with the boxes that are in this vertical horizontal shape, that's an X. And if you put a thing here, it looks like a person, yay. Um, <laughs> Or you can also then again, move it like this. Just um, move slightly into a diamond shape. 
which is not easy, but, but it has to be triangular. And then you get a different kind of feeling to it, a different kind of design, okay? Great. Good. Okay, another shape you can do is a circular shape. So that's easier, little bit of a circle. And you can put something in the middle. Another shape that we can make, adjust a line from one side to the other. And just leave it like that, okay? Um, the other, the other way you can make the letter Z. No, actually you can make the letter A. My name is Aurelio, so I'm gonna make the letter A. I'm gonna see if I can make an N. Uh, yeah, that's that's a little challenging, but it is you gonna can be do hard, it. But I think I can do it. Yeah. So so there it is. There's the letter A. Uh, ta -da. So uh, if you guys it. want to make your word, your name, you can do that design with this. And then then again, you can just switch a little bit these boxes and then the design becomes more interesting because of that of that diamond shape that you get you know um and you can play with different shapes like that okay all right so let's assume i'm going to my favorite one is my favorite one is this one but I need more rows. I'm gonna do three rows. So now, right now we are ready to glue our boxes and we're gonna do it in our favorite, you know, uh, form or shape. So I'm gonna do this one. These boxes are like this, these okay. are like diamonds and these are like diamonds too, okay? Now, so the next step will be to grab your glue and then you're gonna put it and I, really, I'm not using the watered down glue for this step, am I? No, okay. the watered using... down glue, thank you. The watered down glue would be for the papers. Okay. I think we okay. just need to make sure these are stronger. So we're just gonna do like, actually I'm changing my mind. I'm gonna do my, my, my letter A, mm -hmm. okay? So you can change your mind right up until you actually glue yeah. it. Glue it. Yeah. Once thank that glue you. goes down. That's it. That's it. Yeah, so that's my letter A. Great. We do. Good. And Aurelia, so, we have just about 10 more minutes. Yikes, okay. Uh, we're gonna go very quick and we're gonna just just um, glue the boxes, put glue on which one. So we put, So it doesn't have to be like a definite um, final shape. It can be, you know, different shapes. If you don't like it, you can just remove it and do another shape. But but this is pretty much what I like you to do. We we have a, the letter and that box wants to be open. And if you'd like, um, you can share in the chat if you have a shape that you came up with that you're really excited about. Um, you can also always email us pictures of what you've done to education at bronxmuseum.org. We would love to see it. So now I actually glued all my, all my boxes, which is a good thing. And, um, and now I'm ready to start gluing some of my papers. I will cut a little bit more like these papers and I will just cut them in triangles and squares. and just be ready to, to glue them. I also have this fabric, which is really great. And I'm gonna cut it a little bit. I'm gonna cut it in small. And so the next step, once you make these shapes, it's just very simple. This is the foam part. Then we're gonna start gluing. We got my brush and we're gonna start gluing the materials, okay? So we just start putting things any way you like. There are two ways you can glue it directly into the paper like this or or or, or on the on the shapes that you are making. Okay. This will take a little bit of time. Because then yeah, and I, I think once we have our, our squares glued down the way we want and we start this process, 
we can always come back to this later when we have more yeah. time and we can explore our supplies. We can, um, yeah, I think the most challenging part are the squares, making, making the shape because the sculptural part of it is the most important one here. And then you can, you can begin just putting this kind of shape, colors and yeah. designs. We can also do the, the, the floor of it. Let me get this closer. Yeah, because you can always add more, but the basic sculpture shape is going to be probably stay pretty much the same. Yeah, this is a little bit of a lower process and um, slower, slower, slower um, process to that takes takes a little bit of time. Mm. This needs more glue. So you can use both glues. You can use the glue stick too, whichever makes it much more like comfortable for you. And uh, continue gluing, gluing materials. Let me find different colors because this is getting a little bit like the same. I'm gonna cut these colors. That's great because Aurelio, I was just about to ask you how you're choosing which uh, colors and paper you wanna use. Oh no, it's, yeah, I just like, um, I mean, when I'm in automatic, as I see, I just, I just, you know, like here, I can go just like that and say, this will look here. It's a little bit of planning, but it also a little bit of an instinct of saying, this will be great here and just do it, you know, instinct. and just, yeah. Um, unless you really have something very strong in mind, I think it's just good to do that. Now we got these wonderful stickers and uh, you can use them. I'm gonna put a sticker here. Let's see. So the the, the artwork all of a sudden begins take, begins taking more like force by adding this this kind of element, this colorful element, which is what some forgivers biggers um, do, do. Um, he does um, with the shapes, he has this colorful element to it. And uh, it just is amazing. Um, let's see, these are mirrors. Oh, I love this. I'm gonna put a mirror here. So I guess it's just part, a very important part of it that you take care of everything around it, whether it's the bottom or the top. Okay, I have these great stickers. If you got the the kit, these are this this these amazing stickers. These are hearts. I love it. I'm gonna put one here. Beautiful, Nell. Thank you. So yeah, this is my again. I um, wasn't able to get these this kit of art materials. So this is what I did with my found materials around the house. Um, but you can see that. Aurelio has a lot of great um, colored paper and other accessories to work with. And Aurelio for, for, has just about for, five minutes. Oh, okay. For the people who didn't uh, have boxes, you know, the, the replacement will be doing this, this white paper, okay? So the arrangements that, I, that you saw that I made, you can do them with, with this white paper. I'm gonna make my, my name, my, my letter A, like this. And the same thing, the same thing um, can apply, you know. Yeah, or what I did, which was um, because my boxes didn't come out so well, I used uh, squares of cardboard. So it's a little bit three dimensional, but it's still. Oh, that's very good. Yeah, I'm not seeing that, Nell, but yeah. So, so those people at home who couldn't make the actual boxes, this is an alternative. And then we do the same thing, gluing the papers and gluing the beautiful um, other colors that you have all around it. So the important thing is that you create some shapes with the white, you know, and then you play with it and then you do all these kind of designs. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit more. I'll put this. I like these strips, so I'm gonna glue the strips right here.
can have my space here. So working with the with the water glue, it's a little bit easier to to handle when it, when you put like a lot of papers. It's almost almost doing like paper mache, and then you can put some glue on top. Um, can put some glue on the pieces. I'm gonna do slide here with a little bit more time. You can also take care of some of these areas. The boxes here, they are very beautiful. They look like wood. So, you know, there's a nice feeling, an element to it. Um, and you can observe that in any, in any cardboard box. Um, so- I'm nervous that mine's gonna fall when I try to show it. Oh, <laughs> I glue it down a little better. Um, and so uh, Patrick's background actually is um, a virtual background showing the gal one of the galleries of the Stanford Biggers exhibit. So you can see some of the work that's inspiring these activities. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, oh, nice. That's great. It is kind, kind of blending of, with the virtual yeah, background and disappearing. But <laughs> you can see the boxes. You get the idea. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And I know I'm going to add a lot to mine too later. So I feel like I, I started something, but I didn't get as far with it as I wanted to. But I'm going to go back to it later when I have time and keep working on it. Yeah, this is very additive, I think. Mm -hmm. Great. Good. So, so yes, it, it will be hard to display this way because everything will fall. But, um, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, um, I think the idea is that you continue doing the work and, and just carefully designing. You can even do the size of the paper. And I think that will, of the, of the boxes that is. So we don't have time to do all that. I just began just doing, I will show it again. I just began, I guess it's just the beginning and you just can continue doing it, the inside and the bottom. Um, it doesn't have to be covered everything, but but I think the more happy you are with the artwork, as um, the better. You know. Beautiful. Thank Thanks, you, Aurelio. Thank you. Great. Um, so I'm going to make you an attendee, and now um, I'm going to bring in Alex, who's going to be doing our second activity. Um, for anyone who's just joining us now, again. Um, Thank you for coming to our virtual Bronx Museum Family Affair event. Um, we would love to hear your thoughts, but also see images of anything you've made. Um, you can email that to education at bronxmuseum.org. Alex, hey, Alex. You did. Good. Sorry about that. I always do that. Um, so the activity that we're going to be doing is a little bit more two-dimensional than Aurelio's project. Um, so we're going to be making paper quilts um, inspired by Sanford Biggers quilts. Um, so I was really drawn to these works because of their connection to the Underground Railroad. So Biggers started creating them after researching the Underground Railroad and hearing um, about how um, they might have been used as signposts um, along escape routes throughout the 19th century. So um, he was he used a lot of different imagery and a lot of colors in these um, quilt works. Um, and what I was really interested in were the works that showed, um, that were inspired by mandalas, which are these um, geometric configurations of symbols that are um, most prevalent in the East. Um, and they have a lot of spiritual purposes. Um, they reflect that life is never ending and um, everything is interconnected. So there are two um, images that I would like to show. Patrick and Nala, is it okay if I share um, a PowerPoint with two images on it? Yeah, um, you should be able to share your screen. Let me know if it's not working. Yeah, perfect. Great. Awesome. So here are two examples of Sanford Bigger's um, quilts where you can see that he used um, a lot of the geometry and symmetry that we see in mandalas. So 
um, on the image on the left, there's this big golden like star um, kind of looking shape. Um, and while it's not completely symmetrical on every side, um, it's still inspired by that mandala shape, just like the one on the right, which also has this like center star and then it radiates out to all of these several shapes. So um, looking at these images, I was inspired to make my own quilt. So I'll share my paper quilt with you, which is um, not completely symmetrical. It's symmetrical on either side, left to right, if you're looking at it this way, and then bottom to top. Um, but I used a couple of cutting techniques that I think would be helpful um, to create some of this geometry and symmetry. So I will stop sharing now um, and we can start cutting. So the supplies that you'll need are um, construction paper of any color that you are interested in using. Um, I pulled out some fallish kind of earthy tones um, and then a pair of scissors, um, a ruler, um, glue. I don't have a glue stick, so I just use Elmer's glue, but if you have a glue stick, that works just as well. Um, and then a pencil to help you um, create any lines. So the first step, I'm not sure if tipping my laptop down is going to be able to show my workspace, but oh, it does. So um, the first step that I thought was really helpful is creating a square with one of your sheets of paper. Um, and the best way to do that is to measure the shortest side. So if you have your ruler, you can just measure the bottom and we see that this paper is eight and a half inches um, at the shortest side. And then I'm going to take my pencil and make sure that all of the sides are eight and a half inches. So now I have, I made a little marking here and I'm drawing a line where I will cut the excess paper off. And again, if you don't have a ruler, which I thought I did, but I was not able to locate it, you can use the straight edge that's just a consistent length, right? Exactly, yeah. It should work um, just as well um, as a ruler. And then once you have your square, I think it's really helpful to create um, that center point in the paper, the way that like a mandala has like that center spot. So what I did was um, I drew a line down the middle of the paper. So again, if this is eight and a half, we're gonna draw, I mean, you can always fold the paper as well if that's an easier way for you to figure out what's halfway. And I actually did that when I was creating my artwork because I felt like I didn't want to use a ruler so much because it gets very mathematical. <laughs> Not my forte. Um, so now you can take the ruler and you can draw a line down the middle of your square. And then once again, you can fold it this way down the side. And then you have four little squares within your bigger square. So I'm going to draw a line here as well. So it should look like this so far. So you've got four little squares and one large square around it. And then I'm gonna just take my ruler diagonally um, and draw a line diagonally down each corner. So there's one diagonal line. I know my lines are white, which is a little bit difficult. <laughs> Um, and then another diagonal line. And this is just to help you create like the center symmetrical point of um, this like mandala inspired imagery, but we'll cut more shapes later that will help decorate your quilt and make like paper patchwork. So now you have a square with an X down each side and lines down the middle of each side. Yes, Patrick, that looks awesome. I'm a second behind because I feel that I messed up one of my lines, so I turned it over. I like that no. you're using purple gray. 
That looks great. <laughs> so now we have our paper and we're going to fold it again the way we did before when we were drawing our lines. We're going to fold it lengthwise this way. Um, so you have like a long rectangle like this. For some reason, I'm having a hard time folding it, right? And then we're going to fold it again so it's small this way. So we're ending up with a square? Yeah. And it's really just so that if you'd like, if you could see in, in the quilt that I made, I kind of was able to cut these. Oh, sure. Yeah. Edges. Um, so you can cut them however you'd like, really. Um, but just make sure that you're not cutting um, here where the folds are, but that you're cutting over here, which is where the paper is like separate from each other. And then you can cut whatever shape you really want. You can make it really geometric or you can make it um, organic and kind of like rounded. So I'm cutting these like cloud-like shapes um, with a pointed edge. And I'm doing that, I'm trying to make it as symmetrical as I can, but you can really make whatever kind of shape you want. Um, and then the cool thing is when you open it, you have this shape that should be symmetrical, perhaps not on all four corners, but at least from here to here and then from here to here. Um, and now, um, this is like the center of your um, quilt. So I'm gonna put it down on this orange paper, but I'm not gonna glue it yet because I haven't really decided um, how I wanna arrange it. So now we're really just creating shapes to um, add some decoration to our quilt. Um, so it's almost like if we were creating different patchworks um, you have complete freedom as to how you want to decorate your quilt, but if you want to create um, several of the same shape to help create that symmetry, we're just going to fold our paper again. So if you want to take another color, um, I'm going to take red, but I also have black here. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to take the black one. I'm going to fold the black paper in half. Um, and then fold it in half again. And you can really fold it in half as many times as you want because you're going to make um, whatever shape you'd like and this will help you create several of the same shape. So now I've folded it into this pretty small rectangle. And now I'm just going to think of some shapes that I might wanna cut. Um, so for my quilt, I was inspired by some of the things I was seeing in nature. Um, so I was seeing a lot of leaves on the floor because it's fall and I was seeing a lot of really beautifully colored leaves. So I decided that I would cut some shapes that were inspired by some of the leaves I saw outside. And that's really up to you. You can cut whatever you want. If there's, you know, like a game character or something that you're really into, you can cut as many of those shapes as you want, as long as you layer your paper the way that I showed you, you'll have several of the same shapes. Now, Alex, are you um, free cutting a shape? Yes. Could people draw shapes if they want, if that helps? Yes, you can definitely draw shapes. Um, I believe if you picked up your kit at the Bronx Museum, I believe you have color pencils and mm -hmm. um, you can definitely create um, drawings as well. Um, I liked, I like cutting because I feel like it gives this illusion of like what a paper quilt would look like and you can definitely add more color with the color pencils. So now I have several of the same shape of leaf um, and I'm just going to arrange them here to see what it would look like if I had four um, symmetrical leaves on my quilt. And you can really keep going with whatever shapes you might wanna add more leaves because I had cut um, seven. You can add more or less. This is really up to you. And then if you have any 
excess paper, you can continue cutting shapes in that paper. So I have some extra paper here. I'm gonna cut some circles to add. And um, you can start thinking about where you might wanna arrange them. And if you're ready to start gluing, you can definitely start gluing. So I'll give you some tips for gluing to make sure that it doesn't get too messy. So if you're using um, Elmer's glue, you just wanna make sure that it's close to the edge, but not too close to the edge. So the glue is just here on the outside edge with leaving about half an inch of space from the edge. And I'm also putting glue in the middle so that it doesn't jut out at all. And I'm not squeezing the Elmer's bottle too hard so I don't get glue everywhere. Feel free to share with us in the chat um, if you cut out a shape that you're really excited about. I did this, these are, I guess, kind of tulipy, or they could be like paw prints. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, if you do not happen to have all this beautiful colored paper, um, I'm just using regular lined paper and I'm adding the color myself. So you can make it work. I like the shape that you cut now. Oh, thank you. I, I didn't know what it was going to look like till I unfolded it. I know it's kind of like a surprise. You just really don't know what's going to happen. Um, so I, I'm just continuing to glue my shapes down since I have a general idea now where I want everything to go. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat as well. How many leaves did you end up with, Alex? I actually ended up with one, two, three, um, four, five, six, seven. So quite a few leaves. I might not use them all, but it's nice to have additional yeah. ones just in case. Um, and I'm gonna have the leaves like radiating from the center point of my initial shape. I didn't even mean to, for this to have like Halloween colors, but it does. It's like candy corn. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and fall too. And fall, yeah. I'm curious what everyone is doing for Halloween this year. Yeah, you know, it will be interesting. Well, like I said, you can really take complete um, creative freedom over what shapes you want to include um, and how symmetrical you want them to be. Um, but I think cutting a lot of shapes and having a lot of options um, is really helpful to help it look like um, a patchwork kind of quilt. And if you pasted your um, your shape, like my yellow shape is pasted on this orange background, um, you can also decorate the orange part and have it continue to have other imagery on the outside as well. Beautiful. Patrick, how are your shapes? Pretty good. It's not my piece uh, is not as well it's symmetrical, like on from side to side, but not from top okay. to bottom. Oh, I really like it. Thank you. It's great. How did, see what the... how did you cut that shape in the middle? That's all like that goes from large to small, kind of. Um, this type of shape. Yeah. Yeah, I was just I folded a piece of um, blue paper in half and then cut it in half again. And then I cut on both sides so that when I opened it, it created something like this. And then I had two of them and I chose to use this one because it would allow some of the color from the, the pink to come out through the middle. And then I put those black lines in there when I was measuring and I liked how those looked in the image. 
Yours is very abstract looking. I really like it. Thank you. I might start using some of the materials that were in the bag that were not specifically for this activity. Some of the some of the materials that were for Aurelio's activity, the little um, stickers and things, I might start adding those to this too. That's a good idea. What were um, some of those additional materials? Oh, just some some kind of fun stickers and um, little like pre-cut shapes, um, small pieces or some reflective um, like mirror pieces. Uh, there's some buttons. There's some rhinestones. Who doesn't like those? Well, yeah, I mean, similar to Aurelio's activity, Alex, I feel like this is um, really additive and you can always, you could always come back to it and add more shapes or feel like you wanted to draw on it using some other material. And I feel like that's um, really what a lot of Sanford Biggers pieces look like um, they've been added to continually. Yeah. I mean, for sure. And I had a hard time figuring out if I was really done with this one because I felt like I could have kept going and I didn't really add anything on the outside black edge, um, which I think, um, you know, you can just keep going with it. You're never really totally done. Um, that's the cool thing about creating like a collage or something that requires cutting and pasting. Um, yeah. I love those leaves. Thanks. You know, the funny thing is, is that I feel like every time I'm at a family affair, I like make better project examples than when I'm alone. <laughs> You're inspired by the environment. Yeah, being around other people. <laughs> yeah, I work better in groups. Mm -hmm. I wonder if now I'm thinking maybe not on this Oh yeah, I definitely want to make another quilt where I use this negative space from the shape that I cut out. Yes, the negative space is always really cool. Yeah. You even yeah. put it on top like this. Some of the negative space from like my leaves can be probably used in something else. It's a little bit messy though, but I can cut them out. Yeah. Cool. And if you need help with cutting or anything, you can always ask an adult around you or a big brother, or big sister um, to help you with some of that cutting if it's a little bit hard. I know it's hard to cut really small shapes. And it's pretty hard to cut circles. It took me a long time. Yeah, circles are tricky. You have to kind of turn the paper around like while you're cutting. I am discovering that if you want a uniform color, crayon is maybe not the best material, but I still like my quilt. Nice, I like that. Has texture. You've, exactly. Because you've added all that crayon. Just like a kind of cloth might. Mm -hmm. but yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm going for. Exactly. So the in the material bag, there's also some fabric pieces. And I'm going to actually use some of these too. I'm going to glue some of these fabric pieces onto my paper quilt. Now you have like a multi. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The paper quilt that has a tiny bit of being like a cloth quilt. Yeah. But I'm going to use the same idea. I'm going to fold it to make my shape still. Nice. Is it hard to cut? No, it's, this is like a felt and it's actually very easy to cut. Great. Oh, nice. So I guess I'll make another shape. 
Yeah, let's see. We have about five more minutes. Okay. So I'm going to cut some really small shapes to add to the back where the orange is. Um, or actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a center. So something that I can put right in the middle over here. Oh, cool. So I'm going to do that by cutting what is essentially a square and layering it over a bunch of, uh, I guess I don't really have to do that. I'm going to fold it a bunch of times again. So now I have this kind of star. Oh, cool. <laughs> I can, you can it's always butterflyish. Yeah, it is a little butterflyish, and I can go back in and cut it a little bit more to make it more what I want. So now it's like a could be a butterfly or a flower, and I'll put it right here in the center. And if you have like extra shapes, you can always put those on um, the cardboard also that you were working on with Aurelio that if you didn't get a chance to finish that. Oh yeah. Cause I definitely have a lot of extra shapes that I mm -hmm. have cut. So now I have a center. I'm gonna put a circle in that the center part. Oh, and it looks like we have a question in the chat about some of Sanford Bigger's pieces. Um, so I was able to visit the museum and it gets my attention that some creations have burn marks on them. And I was wondering if the marks were made before starting to paint or putting parts together from there or after the paint and just seeing where to make the mark or how it would look like. Um, that's a great question. And I'm really glad you were able to come see the exhibit. Um, I'd love to hear more about what you thought about it. Um, I'm not sure um, what the order of making these pieces is. Um, so unfortunately, I think I don't know. Patrick has the catalog and I think he's gonna see if he can find any of the pieces you're talking about. There's one piece and there are there are some pieces there, for example, have uh, materials like burnt cork used as a drawing material to give that kind of, um, give that look of almost like ash. There's also, um, I know, for example, with this piece called Harlem Blue, which I, I hope will show up. Maybe it will. A little. Oh, uh, yeah. Now we can kind of see. If I put my body in front of the. Sort of. Hey, yeah. You can Not see the upside. figures that are almost upside down on the top. Yeah. And there's a feeling of a um, almost like a burnt edge there as well. And I know in that case, it's using spray paint to. Um, like an umber color spray paint to create that illusion of almost like a, um, a burn mark. But I think in some cases it really is either like a cellulose eating paste, which is in, used in like fashion design, which is like a, it actually burns fabric, um, kind of eats through it. Um, but in terms of the order, it is really complex. And, and when you come to the museum to see the work, you'll really see that there are so many layers, layers upon layers, embroidery, uh, screen printing, acrylic paint that's either like in some cases dripped onto the quilts but it's also important to remember that all, really all of these works in the show use antique quilts some of them you know 100 years old and then they're adding to those Sanford Biggers is adding to those quilts um, and even sometimes taking multiple quilts and sewing them together to create a new quilt so it's really about like almost remixing um, and reimagining like these objects in different forms and bringing in all kinds of different symbols and different types of, of artistic language 
um, to reimagine what they can be. Great. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah. Um, all right, Alex, I think we have just about another minute. Is there anything that you want to leave us with? Um, no, I hope you guys all enjoyed making these paper quilts. And like Nell said, you can keep going with it. I can definitely keep going with this one. Um, I probably will for a little while, but it was great to, wow, Patrick, that looks so good. <laughs> it's quite, kind of psychedelic. It is kind of psychedelic. Yeah. Um, so thank you all for joining and for those who will watch later. Um, we hope you enjoy the activity and I'm excited to see everyone back at the museum soon. Thank you and so much, Alex. Thank you, Alex. And, and please, we, we would love to see work that you all have made today. So please email us at education at bronxmuseum.org. The email address is in the chat. Um, if you send us an email with the art that you've made, we'd love to be able to share it if it's okay with you on our social media um, and also just see what you've been making. Uh, and also, if you picked up the materials of the museum, you also got these uh, activity sheets in English and Spanish for both of the activities that our educators did today, that Aurelio and Alex did today. So if you didn't have a chance to finish it or you wanted to do, do it again or introduce it to somebody else, you can always use these and they'll also be available online on our website uh, along with these videos so that you can continue to make art. Great, um, and yeah, as we said at the beginning, but um, as a reminder, our next um, family program is going to be a week from tomorrow, next Sunday, November 1st, um, and it's going to be a family program for uh, Dia de Muertos, Day of the Dead. Um, Aurelio and his band will play some wonderful music, um, and you can sign up through um, the link that I just left in the chat, and it will also be available on our website. Um, so thank you again, everybody, so much for coming um, to the Bronx Museum's Virtual Family Affair. We look forward to seeing all of you at the museum soon, but in the meantime, it's great to be able to um, be with you virtually as well. So have a great rest of your day, and we hope to see you again soon. See everybody. Thank you.